Golden Gate University Law School faces bankruptcy and or closure. Not necessarily in that order, but yeah. All right. So that, so why do we care about that? Well, we like to hate on San Fran, right? Because they got a lot of policy that ends up in just ridiculousness going on. Golden Gate University, the law school going under. Here's one of the things that's super interesting. Has to do with the real estate market. They were going to use the sale of some real estate in downtown San Fran to be their exit strategy. This wasn't that long ago. The market has tanked so hard that they're like, oh, that's not viable. We can't get enough to make it go. What are we going to do? That's how they end up here. That was their exit strategy. Sell some buildings until we get some more kids in here to learn the law at Golden State, Golden Gate University. Let's jump on into it. Let's get into the details. Here we go. Is anything going right in San Francisco right now? It's hard to say. Or is it just the lens that I'm, you know, looking at it through? All right. All right. You, got, you got a lot of, you got a lot of topics going on there that are going the wrong direction. You're not going in the right direction. Law school closing down. A nonprofit law school. I believe it is private. It's a private university. Nonprofit law school in downtown. It, is it a university? Ah, uh, law school? Don't know. Downtown San Francisco faces an existential vote on Wednesday as students and faculty join forces to keep the 122-year-old institution alive. That may not be worth keeping alive, but you're going to do it anyway. We're going to do it for the university. Wacky, right? Found It is a university, Golden Gate University. What am I talking about? Founded in 1901, Golden Gate University has struggled to stay afloat in recent years, but the surrounding neighborhood's deteriorating economic condition has taken its toll. Well, all right. So where is it? Let's take a look and see where it is. Here we are. Tenderloin. Not good. That's what you got going. Even And for this podcast, I did, um, I think, Mission Street. I think we are somewhere right in here. Right in here is where we are on Mission Street. 536, I think the address. So this is the poop interactive map. Yes, there are some pooping instances, but far more over here on Market Street itself on this part. I think we're over here. We're located right over here. Um, yeah, so um, fair amount of poop, but not inundated. But the, the, the commercial building impact from this is such that, well, we'll continue reading here. All right. So surrounding neighborhoods, deteriorating economic condition has taken its toll. A January 2022 plan to stay afloat by selling property sputtered out with the precipitous devaluation of downtown commercial real estate, the university said in a letter to the law school community last Friday. Can you imagine being the university president? All right, guys, here's our game plan. We're going to keep the law school afloat. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to sell off this. I mean, not a bad plan. I mean, if you've got the resources to be able to move forward and pay rent on whatever and you know get your numbers in line, but real estate has dropped so much. And to have a group of academics actually admit to that, to understanding, oh, yeah, they must have got a CMA for building or whatever they've got. Because it's my understanding, it's not a very large structure that they're on. I don't know how much they're expecting to get. But the fact that we're talking about it leads me to believe that whatever number that they were thinking they were going to get is now just like pie in the sky because we've got a precipitous devaluation of downtown commercial real estate. What are some examples of that? Well, you've got a couple of the, the biggest hotel in San Fran going back to its lender. You've got buildings that were valued at $300 million. Maybe it's Maybe it was worth two fifty million that are now selling in the mid to high $60 millions. Call it sixty seven five down from $300 down from 250, down from 200, any of those numbers, massive drop in value. That's because a lot of these buildings are half full and they don't have the cash flow to warrant more. And then people aren't wanting to buy a building in downtown San Francisco because there's already 31% 
of the office space in downtown is vacant. So you're going to go in and, you know, buy another space and compete with all the other vacant space? No. And that's what's going on. And that's what's just absolutely driving property values down. In sum, a perfect storm has impacted GGU law, the letter read. The university cannot continue to sustain an operating deficit from the law school, and we must maintain sufficiently high admission standards in order to comply with the American Bar Association bar passage requirements. No decisions have been made. Really interesting. You got a law school that is tanking, can't bail out selling their land. What do we do? The administration acknowledged to the standard that a proposal regarding the law school's long-term future exists. Here's what we're doing, guys and gals, is what we're doing. However, the university neither confirmed nor denied, I can neither confirm nor deny, that outright closure or giving up its accreditation with the American Bar Association were on the table. I mean, if you give up your, if you give up your accreditation as a law school at the American Bar Association, I can't imagine that's a good thing. Where'd you go to school? Oh, golden what? Oh. Are they even are they even accredited? Oh, they're not. What did you learn at law school, young man or young lady? Where what was the deal there? Students, faculty, and alumni, however, were told that the board of trustees would either close the law school altogether or relinquish its accreditation, according to a letter circulating to save the school. What about kids that started off there? What about third year law students right now? They're like, I'm so hosed. Why did I go to this school? Oh, because mommy and daddy paid. Because mommy and daddy are rich and they paid. I mean, hate to knock on all the kids that are out there in scholarship, but um, it's kind of, it feels like this is that type of law school. I don't know much about this school at all. Let's be honest. I did a quick search and then I decided to try and find how much poop was on the sidewalk as my best indicator. And it wasn't terrible. It wasn't as bad as I thought. But anywhere, it was still in very close proximity to the Tenderloin. So any building in that area, it's going to take a massive whack. And it has. Concerns revolved around providing a path to law school for people otherwise overlooked by traditional legal education institutions. What do we got going to school here? People that can pay? I think so. Otherwise overlooked by traditional legal education institutions. Well, if, if they, if, the, if, yeah, if they're going to law school and they're getting overlooked, maybe these aren't the sharpest tools in the shed. Yeah, it's, you know, there's always kids out there that didn't really apply themselves, but now they really want to give it a go and their GPA just kind of sucks, right? It sucks. And then you got to get into that. I've I've got somebody that I know that's, that's looking to get into med school and doesn't have as she's been trying for a long time and doesn't have the best of portfolio, let's call it, to send to schools, has tried, I think has attempted two or three times and is now in a position where she's working with an advisor and, you know, going down those kind of roads and hopefully she'll get in somewhere. But, you know, the advisor that she's working with, kind of the coach, the med school coach is saying, hey, you're going to have to be willing to go wherever we tell you to apply to, and then actually go there. And it may be an institution otherwise overlooked by traditional med schools. Now, it just means they're, they're not great. They're not ranked that high. This law school in California is ranked, I think, 160th. I did do that much research. 160th. Is that good? I don't know. But the fact that they are overlooked by traditional education institutions, that's who they're taking. All right. You are an alternative to getting a law degree. You may or may not learn much, but hey, we give you whatever this, you know, piece of paper is worth. As one of only American Bar Association law schools with a mission of access to legal education in the Bay Area, GGU law's closure would have far reaching consequences that extend well beyond the institution itself, read the letter, which more than 800 people signed. Do you cash flow positive? Oh, you don't? Oh, and you're running a massive deficit? Don't care how you feel about things, that this would be terrible for you know the school to shut down. If you're not in the red, I mean, if you are in the red, you're going to have to deal with that. It's like, uh, you know, in Chicago, um, 
they closed down a whole bunch of Walmarts because they were just robbing them blind. The community was robbing them blind, shoplifting out the front door 24-7, whatever store hours were. And then the community says they're all up in arms and they you know do a petition. Oh, we're going to petition Walmart corporate to get this Walmart reopened because we really need it. And it's like, you weren't making a profit. That's how they decide which ones get shut down. This law school, not making a profit, not breaking even, going, you know, negative suck. Alternatively, the school could continue with only the state bar of California accreditation. Doing so would limit students' employment opportunities, the letter reiterated, and it would not address any financial difficulties. So they're still going to be in a cash negative position, even if they just cut it down from the American Bar Association to the State Bar of California accreditation. Can you even practice law without the ABA? I don't know. At one time, I wanted to be a lawyer. Sure glad I didn't do that. You just become a professional professional a-hole, right? Just rip people apart. Yeah. All right. Golden Gate Law currently has about 200 students, according to the Student Bar Association President Muhammad Jamal, and needs some... 50 million bucks over five years to avoid bankruptcy. Although the standard was unable to confirm that figure independently. 50 million over the next five years. All right. Where's that going to come from? And that's why maybe, you know, the building, uh, the sale of the building or sale of campus or whatever, however, they're going to work that out. Um, You know, might've bought them some time, but it doesn't sound like they're on the right track. And um, things are not going well for this university. Closure of the program would have a huge effect on the legal industry, Jamal told The Standard. Its status as a law school that produces public interest lawyers. Okay. All right. Public interest lawyers that serve the public good will be lowered. You know what? I know we need public defenders. I know we need that. But I have such a hard time with this kind of stuff. Because they're, they're always like, ah, just just really want to help the community. And oftentimes, mm, yeah, no. Nonetheless, the school's troubles were well documented. The American Bar Association found Golden Gate School University of Law to be out of compliance for having low bar passage rates in 2021. Hey, you aren't teaching the kiddies enough to pass the bar. What is going on? We've got financial difficulties. We can can't hire the best, can't hire the best, which prompted the school to substantially lower its admission rate starting in 2022. That's so horrible. It's, 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 it's the death spiral, right? Now we had to drop our admission rate because we've got this whole, you know, somebody's, somebody's telling us that we're not doing good. Our metrics are not keeping us from failing. The university as a whole is accredited by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges through 2025, but as a formal notice of concern, we are very concerned about this university and its law school moving forward. Uh, And could be sanctioned if its financial situation, among other things, doesn't improve. How are they letting this run if it's that bad for this long? Ah, just keep going, guys. It'll be fine. Get your college degree. Who in the world, after reading this article, would go, you know what? I want to go to whatever it is school. I want to go there. I, I mean, they're kind of on the losing end of things. And, you know, I, I might spend, uh, how much is law school? Is this, I, I don't know. Is this 400 grand? Who knows? Is it 300 grand? Is it 250? I don't even know, right? What is it a year? No idea. But spend all that money, borrow all that money more likely because I'm going to get a good job at when I get out and I'm going to go do crazy things and I'm going to change the world. Uh, and then you find out, well, you didn't have accreditation and you know, you're not really up for a job in the real world, but hey, you know, go practice law there. Losing that status to free up constraints would make things even worse for its graduates and devalued their degrees, faculty and students said. They're in a death spiral, right? What are they going to do to work their way out of this one? Nothing. Board of trustees will vote on proposals for the law school on Wednesday after a meeting close to the public, including students. You guys can't come. We got to talk adult stuff here. You guys, no go, no go. The broader law school community has promised an update by July 1st. 
Jamal hopes that the trustees approve an alternative plan to closure or giving up accreditation. I am hoping because I'm enrolled there and my future depends on it. But some students are fed up and just want to pass the bar and move on. Yeah, but then you're still got to deal with, where'd you go to school? Oh, you went to school there? Didn't they, didn't they go bankrupt and close down? I think they did. Huh. But anywho, you went to school there. I'm sure thing, I'm sure your education system was fine. I'm sure your background is fine. Let's, let's put you on the payroll here. Go down and see HR. You got a job. It's part of GGU's culture of not fostering transparency. What? They're being accused of not fostering transparency and communication with the students. Jamal said, I do sincerely hope that things change. You can always hope. You can always hope. But to expect a miracle? Yeah, I don't think so. This school is going down, isn't it? Unless there's some Hail Mary by some really rich benefactor. School is going down. And the fact that it's, you know, exit strategy was, ah, oh, let's sell some real estate downtown San Fran. Normally, that would be totally okay, right? That would be a good plan. Because if you got assets like those, they're worth a crap ton of money. It's just not right now. Yeah, you need to wait for that market to come around. So you're going to have to need to wait until, you know, the city basically turns around. How long is that going to be? Because I think it's still on the downward spiral. A lot of people are saying, no, nah, it's coming back up. Commercial's coming back around. No, it's not. It's 31% vacant across the city. 31% vacant. One out of three spaces. Empty. Vacant. And that has created this doom loop that we talk about. Because now you're literally talking about the city. Cities, you know, three quarters of a billion dollars deficit. And in the next five years, it's about to run to 1.3 billion is a rough estimate. And you've got a law school in that environment that's already negative cash flow. They're bleeding out money. And they're also not providing a great education to their students as exemplified by their, well, we might have an accreditation. We might not. Who knows? It's unknown. What is the future of the school? We don't know. We might show it down. We might not. We might do this. Instability. Instability kills everything, right? It's like the stock market. Doesn't matter what it is that happened. When something just kind of roils things, people tend to sell because they're, they're like, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? This is terrible. This is awful. And they sell, you know, a couple of days later. Ah, yeah, I wasn't so bad. Ah, news on that story turned around. It's all good. We're not really going to invade that continent. We're not really going to do that. Ah, let's, let's go back and buy some more stocks. And you just got a big spike. I mean, how often does that happen? All the time. Market reacts to something. People react to things. Students react to instability. Might have an accreditation. Might be bankrupt. Don't know, but hey, come to school with us. It's going to be good. How many students are going to take that flyer? How many parents, rich parents of spoiled kids going to law school here are going to say, yeah, this is a good idea. This is a good call. Now they're going to send them one of those other cut rate schools, right? Other private schools where you just basically pay to get in. I hate to be harsh, but I think that's a reality we need to sit with. And also, I mean, we got a lot of lawyers. There's a, there's a, surplus of lawyers out there, right? It used to be there weren't enough a surplus of lawyers. So it's tough to make a job and to make a living. You get into the right industry, you get going, you make yourself valuable. You can always do that in any industry, no matter what it is. You got a glut of lawyers right now. And law school is, law school is so expensive that, you know, saddle yourself up for debt until your forties. And that's what guys do with law, with med school, right? Because, you know, they're working and they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they still got to pay off 300 grand. It's like paying off a mortgage lickety split. You still got to pay it off. You know, you, nothing comes for free, right? So as this, as this saga of this university and its law school continues, I'll keep you updated. What do you want to bet? What, what do you think Vegas odds are on this, this school going banco? High, right? High. I'd roll the dice, put it on red go from there. Always vote red, never blue. It's the right thing to do. Thanks so much for being here. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now. 